Mac OS 13 Ventura is officially out as of today to the general public and this update can be a big and substantial size. It's expected to vary between 5 to 12 gigs and the current build number I have on file is 22A380. Now this video that you are seeing here is actually being recorded live in FaceTime and on the iPhone 14 Pro that you see here you can see when I cover this camera on the iPhone it also covers my video feed it's not coming from the inbuilt camera and it's one of the new features and changes that's here when it comes to Mac OS 13 Ventura. Now the first thing that you are going to see when you update your device is the new system settings that has been changed over. Now you can see here that system settings look looks more like what we have on iOS and iPadOS and so it is something that carries over and if you don't want to miss the way your iPhone or iPad looks like this is something that you are going to really appreciate. Some people love it others don't like it as much so that's a good change another change that's here with mac os ventura is the new wallpaper so you can see here we have the dynamic wallpaper for mac os 13 it has different phases and stages as depicted by the graphics that you can see here and not only that but if you go to the screensaver section you can see we have a ventura screensaver and when you preview you get to see a glimpse of how it's going to look when you set it so amazing new features and changes and of course one of the things that you need to be aware of is the supported devices that are here unfortunately mac os 13 has dropped support for a number of devices you can see here for example when it comes to the macbook a you need a 2018 and later and macbook pro 2017 and later and you can see some of the other macs that are supported on ventura you can pause the video and take a screenshot if you want to make sure that your device is supported. Now, one of the new changes that's here, you can probably see it here on my Mac. Here, I can switch between my recently opened tabs. Like for example, this is FaceTime. I was recently opened, this was a recently opened application. You can see my photos. And this is what is called as stage manager. It's a new revolutionized way that allows you to be able to organize your recently opened tabs. And you can see when you have a window that's taking up most of the screen, it hides the recently opened tabs here. And you have to take your mouse and drag it to the side and they pop up. But if you have a window, for example, like FaceTime that isn't taking the whole screen, you can see here that you can actually just get them and you get a preview here on the side of how they look even when you have like an a window that has live activities like this nba game between the raptors and the net whenever you have it on your side window you can see that it's always updating live and my video that you are seeing here on uh, facetime is also updating live this is a way that you can turn it on by going into your control center and then you turn on stage manager when you turn it off you see that all the windows look all all widespread and all over but if you want to enable it just go to your control center and then enable stage manager and you can see the way it looks more organized and also if you go into your system preferences just in case you don't see it right there in your control center you can go into your system preferences and go to where it says uh, desktop and dock and then if you go to all the way down you'll be able to see this subsection that says stage manager and when you you can also turn it off from there or turn it on from there and then you can also customize it further if you want to show some desktop icons you can show them there but for me i'll be using this as a more of a presentation setup you can see if desktop icons are showing it's not that smooth and it doesn't look clean at all so this is what i advise and that's one of the new major changes that's here with mac os ventura there's also something that's called continuity camera now that's what I introduced and uh, started the video with this. So continuity camera basically allows you to be able to take your Mac and use your existing iPhone as a web camera instead of using the junky inbuilt camera that you have on your Mac. So 
you can see some of the new features that we have here with continuity camera if you go to your control center here and you go to where it says video effects if you click there you can see that it's using my iphone 14 pro as the camera and you can always switch the camera by going to the video section once you have facetime open and then you can use whatever camera you want or if you want to change the microphone too to be the mic of the iphone 14 pro you can also switch it there so if you want to go back to the inbuilt my uh, camera of the mac you can click that or if you want to go back to the iphone 14 pro or your iphone camera you can click there you can see the quality looks way better and there are new features and changes that you can change with this continuity camera if you go there and click where it says video effects you can see i just turned on center stage now this changes from the main lens of the iphone 14 pro to the wide angle you can see how my video quality just went out the room and that's because the wide and lens of the iphone 14 pro is a lower resolution for you to be able to use basic continuity you need an iphone xr or newer but if you're going to be using center stage that i just turned on you can see when i go this side it follows me when i go this side it follows me and <laughs> i'm actually tipping over right so it tries to keep whoever is speaking central and that is a good thing a new setting that's here so that's center stage and then we have portraits that's here you can see here that portrait really puts this depth of field behind me and also you can see that we have studio light that dims the background and sort of puts more light on the, my face and then you have desk view that launches a new window that shows you basically what's on your desk and if you want to start sharing desk view you can share it right there and that's basically how it's going to look it uses the wide lens of the iphone 14 or the iphone that you are using and for desk view to work you need an iphone 12 or newer so that's basically how this is going to work and this also is supported by handoff so if you're going to be handing your call from your iphone or from your mac to your iphone or to your ipad you can always do that there is a setting that you can always turn on by going into settings and then you go to where it says general and go to where it says airdrop and handoff and make sure handoff is enabled and you'll be able to transfer your icloud call from your mac to your ipad or from your iphone to your mac and vice versa so that is something that's good and it does not end there when it comes to most of the new features and changes that are here you can see this is my messaging app and i want to show you some of the new changes that are here because apple did some major updates to the messages app so for example if i send this message that says test i have about 15 minutes to be able to edit this message so if i click here where it says test the message that i sent you can see i have an edit button and if i edit it there i can say test one and you can see it shows that it has been edited and what the receiver gets is what i now have edited as test one if i click right click again and then say edit again i have i can edit this multiple times so i can te say test one two three and then send that instead and the end user will be able to receive the final text as test one two three but it will leave a trail of history of what has been edited so if you click where it says show edit or where it says edited you'll be able to see that the original message said edit test and then uh, it was changed to test one and then from there it was changed to test one two three so you have about 15 minutes from the time you send your original text to be able to edit this and if you don't like what you sent and you want to just change remove it or unsend it at all you still have 15 minutes to be able to undo send and if you click here where it says undo send boom the message disappears and then you'll be able to see that the you unsent a message ben may still see the message on devices or softwares that haven't yet been updated to mac os 13 or to the latest ios 16. 
that is new update that's here with messages and also within messages you have the ability to be able to use share play which is something that's great now i want to go back into safari and show you that safari has been updated greatly so if you go to where it says safari and then click about safari you can see the version that we have here it's 16.1 and the build is 18614.2.9.1.12 has been updated with major bug fixes and not only that but safari has introduced shared groups so for example when we go into full screen right here you can see here that when i go to the left side of my safari i have my shared tab groups that i have here so for example this travel tab group you can see here we do have a number of tabs that are open and if i wanted to share this tab group i just have to go to the three dots and then click way it says share tab group and i can send this to my friends or to people that i want to be able to add input and that is something that's good also when it comes to safari there have been updates to some of the safari extensions that have been added here so apple has enabled new web extension api for safari web extensions and third party developers can be able to add their own extensions and you can add it to safari if that's something that you want to be able to do so it's an amazing new thing and also text in images can be translated using live text in safari so for example if i was to take this here you can see this is an image but let's say i want to translate this response i just select it and then i right click and i can translate this right from an image you see the way it says translate response and then i'll be able to translate it into my selected language i have spanish selected and you can see what response means in Spanish so it's a good thing that you can do this not only to Spanish from images but to a number of other languages that have been added and this is all thanks to mac os ventura within the mail app we also have some new features and changes so if i open up the apple mail app and go to where it says mail and go to settings you can see when i go to the compose section i have some new settings that i can enable so sending and you have undo send delay and you can see there you can have the unsend to be able to give you that option within 30 seconds after you send your email or 20 seconds or 10 seconds from the moment you send your email so i'll just set it to 30 seconds and that's something that's new here and also when you want to send an email you have the ability to be able to schedule a, a message or an email to be sent for a specific time frame so instead of just pressing the send message here you can click the drop down arrow if you want to send it in the, according to some of these preset prefix you can choose those or if you want to customize it further you can click where it says send later and here once you've selected your date and you are happy with the time frame or the time that you want to send your email you can click schedule and then your email will be scheduled to be sent during that time that's something that's here it's now giving us the ability to be able to unsend and schedule emails if you click on the mail subsection there and go to settings and go to general you can see that you have the ability to have a reminder to send an email as a follow-up so you can see that enable message follow-up suggestions and it says mail will remind you about messages that haven't received a response so if you send an email and you are expecting to get a response or an update back this is basically a setting that you need to enable so that the mail app will allow you to be able to get those responses now it does not end there when it comes to the mail app there are new changes too that you can search for so there's updates to the search for example if you search for apple you can see the results are more precise and refined and these are more faster and accurate in search and even when you have typos the results that you get are going to be way better compared to what we had before on the previous versions if you write something in the subject line or in the email body 
it will actually tell you that you forgot to add an attachment or an image if you if it senses that the email you are typing basically needed an attachment so that is also something new that has been included with this update now in system settings you, if you go to the accessibility subsection you can see that they have added these live captions and unfortunately it's still in beta but when you click there you can see that your mac will use their own device intelligence to automatically display captions across all your applications once you turn this on and you can see here in app live captions like for example if you wanted to use live captions for FaceTime and you turn this on you'll be able to see those live captions there if you are a reader and you like to see that this is something that's mind-blowing and revolutionary for the Mac we have a number of new applications that have been added so for example this weather app has been brought over it's similar to what we have on the weather app for the iPhone and for the iPad and you can see when you open it for the first time you will get a notification that tells you that there is introducing severe weather alert and when you click continue it changes during the day and also according to the weather theme and you can always use siri to be able to tell you how the weather is and it has been optimized even for full screen of the mac that you have here so it's good to see that this has been brought so it's one that you can always interact with and see how best you can change this this doesn't end there too when it comes to other applications that have been introduced to the Mac. For example, if you look for the clock app, it has finally been brought over onto the Mac and it's again similar to that which is from the iPhone. So you can see you have the world clock that you can add here and you can always click the plus icon to add different cities and you have the alarm tab here and stopwatch and timers. And this has been integrated too with the background system. So you can actually use Siri to be able to start a timer. You can use Siri to be able to set an alarm or use the stopwatch and these are good changes that i hear for the new application when it comes to the photos app there's also been some major updates similarly to what we have on ios 16 you can see when you open up the photos app for the first time it will tell you some of the new changes that are here so you have shared library where you can combine photos and videos with people closest to you that you have shared it and selected it to and if you do perform some edits in the photos app you can actually copy those edits and paste them and if your photos app senses that you have some duplicate images it will be able to combine them and help you save space for duplicate videos and images this home application has been updated to look more smarter and when you open it up for the first time you can see the pop-up screen that you see it will tell you that you can control your home and you can set it and forget it when it comes to automation and and you can share digital keys for different people but the home app finally adds support for meta which is a new smart home connectivity standard designed to allow accessories from different manufacturers such as apple google amazon samsung and so on to be able to communicate together and more seamlessly so it will make it easier to be able to add third party accessories and it doesn't have to be from the same vendor and it just goes to make it easier for those that use this app and have those devices also the apple maps app has received some major updates it's not as major as mac os 12 but when you open up your mail app for the first time you can see that here you have the ability to add multiple stops so this is my current location that you're seeing here and i've searched for drake street which is about 31 minutes away from where i am and you can see here that if i click where it says add stop i can can choose a specific destination so for example we we'll say rogers and it will give me different rogers that are in the vicinity where i am or if i want to go even further i can always customize the search but you can see you are not limited to like a self station or a quick stop or a gas station shop or something like that that was there before where you were limited to the destination that you can add and this is something that you can always transfer over once you have a route set to your iphone so that you get a seamless transition and your stops will be 
be able to be added and that's also here in ios 16 by the way maps will also be able to give you the ability to calculate how much transit will cost if you're a transit person but this time around maps didn't get a whole lot of updates Generally, you can see that when you have the notes section here, it has been organized by a chronological order. So you have like for today, you can see all the planned pinned notes that I have here. And then you have today, you have yesterday and so on. And also if I go to the view section, I have other changes that I can sort by like by edit date date created title newest or oldest here and if i go to any specific note for example this amazon link and right click on it and go to where it says lock note you'll be able to see that you can now no longer need to remember the password for your lock notes just use your login password or touch id and then you can see if you go down end to end encryption is finally available for your lock notes with Without your login password not even Apple will be able to have access to this so if you want to go ahead and encrypt this further these are options that you have finally when it comes to notes and you can see when it comes to the notes sections too if you right click on a note and you say share notes you can actually add collaborators you can see here it gave me the option to be able to select uh, collaborate now, if I want to just send a copy so that no changes will be made, I'll just select the send a copy. But you can see it's a good thing that you do have the option to send it to a number of people so that they can make changes or their comments or additions to some of the notes that you have. When it comes to live text, I'll be happy to let you know that Apple has updated quite a number of changes here and new features are available in live text. So you can see that this is a YouTube video that I posted a few hours ago. And if I pause the video at any time, you can see I have the ability to select some of the text in the video. And once I select it, I can always copy the text and be able to translate it or if I want to translate it to a different language this is something that's available live from uh, google chrome or if safari is what you are playing the video in you can copy the text and then you can paste it later and then continue to watch your video so live text has been improved it's now supported in videos as i shown it's supported in photos and also if it's supported in quick look if that's something that you want to look out as well as spotlight search safari maps and other locations now speaking of spotlight search you can see here you can either access spotlight search by command and spacebar or you can access your spotlight search by going to your search section there so it has been made more advanced so for example if you search for something like mr beast you can see here you can actually have a preview of some of the websites and uh, social media handles and do specific functions from the quick look function without actually having to launch like google chrome or safari for the function so this is something that has been updated and not only that you can see it does do more functions compared to what we have before it does a more system-wide deeper search and you can do some complex tasks for example if you search for something like start a timer it will be able to start the timer right from spotlight search or if you search for focus you can see that you can enable some of your focuses that you have here like turn on personal focus as an action right there so it runs runs those aut automated shortcuts and these are something that's good that you can have finally from spotlight search it can search for images it can search for things in photos and not only that but it can also search for some of the attachments that you might have in notes or some of the files that you might have in the systems finder folders speaking of focus if we go into our system settings and go to where it says focus you can see that you can create many custom focuses and you can share your custom focuses that you might have created i did create some here for tests so for example this one that i named h you can actually add a schedule for this focus when you want it to come on and you can also add focus filters so for example on the mail section if i just want this to be able to allow me to focus on my work email i can set it as 
a focus and I have more than just the mail filters that I can add. I can add filters for the calendar, for the mail, for the messages and for set tab groups in Safari that you can set here. It allows you to be able to set a certain mood for focus as well and you can share different focus modes to your iPhone as well as your Apple Watch. Now, Apple is actually trying to replace passwords with passkeys. So, passkey is an attempt to replace password with a smarter and more secure system using Face ID for the iPhone and for the Mac using the fingerprint, maybe until we get a Face ID Mac. And when certain accounts are created for specific sites, Apple will create a passkey that works for specific applications and just those select website and that digital key will be stored on a computer and not on a server elsewhere now there is a test site that i did copy and not here so if you open up this site i might i will leave this link in the description of this video you can see that once more vendors come on board with this such as google apple and microsoft since they are the ones taking the lead in this you'll be able to create an account not just using your email but using with passkey or sign in with passkey and when you create using passkey you can see that it will give you options to be able to choose how you would like to sign in so you can sign in with ipad or iphone or android device or use a passkey from a device with a camera so as long as you have a fingerprint sensor or if you have a camera that has face id or even if you have a secure key that's how you'll be able to sign in so if you click continue you can see you can scan the qr code on a device running ios 16 or later or another compatible device to sign in but this is just a test site but soon once this is fully implemented you'll be able to just sign in using your fingerprint and that will be your password for certain selected sites now microsoft apple and google are the foreigners of this and this is something that might be coming out fully later on this year some other changes that are here for example in the system settings if you go to the accessibility and go to voiceover this is now supported in over 20 languages and they have added support for like polish turkish and so on and also if you go back and go to the live captions section here soon you'll be able to type to speak for video conferencing apps that are here for the mac and also when you go to the general tab here and go to software update and click on the little eye that you see there you will have the ability to be able to install just security updates without downloading the system or upgrading your operating system so if you do update to mac os ventura and you are happy with some of the settings that you see and are able to use here and you want to stay on it until you feel that other updates or other softwares get better you can just install security response and system files and also you can install application updates from the app store that is a good thing and you don't have to update your system before doing this when it comes to the stock app you can see that now we have a new pop-up screen that shows you market data business news iphone and ipad and mac you can use icloud to view stocks and news on all your devices if you are signed in and not only that but the stock app has added earnings date and news splash screen so whenever you set or follow a specific company you'll be able to see when the earnings are and you can follow those in detail siri 2 has been updated so siri updated design gives it more targeted responses and when it comes to uh, like icloud and mail i'll be happy to let you know that icloud plus hide my email is supported not just in apple native applications but also it's supported in third party applications and dictations 2 is supported in other apps and auto punctuation such as inserting a comma a period or a question mark is something that's supported and you can actually also use dictation to insert emojis so for example if i was to go here and use my dictation command you can see i'm using the dictation and if i say for example heart emoji it adds the heart emoji and if i say thumbs up emoji 
it adds the thumbs up emoji so these are just some of the minor updates that are here and also when it comes to apple pay and wallet i'll be happy to let you know that payment sheets have been updated to make it easier to add cards and manage transactions so those are some of the major new features that are here when it comes to mac os 13 ventura it's unfortunate that some of the vices have been let go but if you do like this video and you find it helpful and informative in a way then definitely do leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video peace